Good evening, everybody. This is the Monday, January 10th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, this will be a joint Select Board Finance Committee at some point meeting, right? Starting on the 24th. Yes. All right, so that's just still up on the agenda accidentally. Oh. Um, um, so a call to meet, meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the minutes from the third. Thought they were Those fine. Yeah. I make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. And the Board of Health is joining us with their fabulous feedback. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Hi, Jackie. Hey. Hi, everybody. Uh, yes. Um, hi, Jackie. So we have no warrant. We have no warrants tonight. Um, meetings attended by select board members. Anybody, Erica? Nope. Bob, I know you. You were at the Frontier Capital meeting. Uh What else? You can talk about that, so I don't have to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we had we had we changed it to be a. a, a why don't you talk about? We changed it to be a a, a, a a Zoom meeting instead of instead of an in person meeting. But I forget. But uh, but I had a conservation visit today to the to, to the um uh, uh, to the house on Route One Sixteen that that, that uh, got donated, and uh, so we'll see how that's going to go. I'm sorry, somebody's got music playing in the background, which is lovely, but. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what that is. People aren't muted that maybe could be. And they're still not. It's got to be. Is that one of the nurses? Oh, so everybody mute awesome. themselves for a minute and we'll just see and then we Jackie, can... I think it's you. No way. Could you mute? <laughs> or is it Pat? Oh no, it might have might have been Deb. There we go. Okay. Excellent. All right. Go. All right. So yeah, um, but just since just since last Monday, it was that I had a frontier budget committee meeting, a frontier school committee meeting, and um, um, a frontier capital committee meeting, and then just to just the past couple hours were the contract negotiations with our frontier teachers and IAs. Um, so the the budget was the first reading for the frontier budget, and um, it was deemed by the budget committee to be unacceptable and to go back to the drawing board. Seriously, so. Um, was well, just just not quite ready for prime time yet. So, but that it's not really their fault because that's they don't have any information about how much revenue they're going to have for this year yet. So, it's a kind of new budgeting. Um, the uh, the capital committee. So Frontier had a bunch of they they called it the dirty six or the dirty seven or something like that. The, um, just big capital projects and some of them. Some of them are, you know, done. It's nice to cross some of them off the list. The, the, uh, the track came out great, and um, the carpets have come out great. The, uh, uh, but there's there's a bunch of others, and and looming large over everything is the need for the three million dollar roof project, or whatever. So that's we're, we're not we're not approving that for this year, but that's that's going to be coming up. And one of the topics that we talked about is, you know. The, uh, the there's a tennis court that needs to be rebuilt or whatever that's like a hundred and something thousand and one of the things that we talked about is when it comes to like those tennis court and also the the uh, uh, the track for Con for Conway's contribution this year for the track um, we it could go through CPA those are recreational facilities and it's we haven't talked about that or thought about that but just want to put that out there, especially in your mind, Veronique, that those are things that we can do um, with those line items of the Frontier Union 38 
budget because those are recreational facilities open to our public. And there are members, there are people in Conway that do go run at that track because it is a proper track to run on. Um, we also talked about the HVA system on the third floor. Yes, yes. And yeah, and, and it is a sauna in there and starting in like April. It's, so, but uh, yeah, they're gonna, they wanna do something about that. Get some mini splits and air conditioning up there. And those we should get reimbursed by some climate change, whatever, because those are the thing, when they built that school 30, whatever, however many years ago, they didn't, the third floor, you didn't need air conditioning up until, you know, the end of May, like now you do. And so, yeah, well, um, public comments, anybody? Old business, none, new business. So first item, and since Josh is here, he's the first item to approve the Forest Climate Resilience Program non-binding letter of intent to update the town's forest stewardship climate plan. And, and um, it's great that you're here, Josh. So you want to uh, tell us why this is, tell the public that are watching too, it's why this is a good thing for the town and why you think that we should do it, get right on it. Sure. So, um, well, so I guess like, if you want the full spiel, I have a, probably a 10 minute PowerPoint or I can just say it in a couple of second sentences. And, um, what would you like? Yeah, I don't know. Middle ground, there's gotta be a middle ground between middle two sentences and 10 minutes, Josh. Sure. Um, um, all right, sure. all right. Well, essentially what this does- I'm just teasing, I'm just, I'm just teasing you, whatever you feel comfortable with, it's okay. fine. Well, I'll start out with the short one and if you want more information, I can bring up some slides, how about that? All right. All right. um, yeah, so so Conway uh, last year got forest stewardship plans for two town properties, um, which are fantastic. Uh, and I, I've, I've read those plans and they're great. One thing that's happening now with, with DCR, so forest stewardship plans are a DCR approved type of plan. Um, DCR is creating a forest stewardship climate plan, which honestly, the, the Conway ones are, are pretty close to that already because um, you guys have said that climate is, is important to you. Um, what this new type of plan does is sort of formalizes that for the for DCR and, and approving that. And um, so that, that's one piece. The other piece is that through uh, two grants, uh, two MB, MVP grants, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grants, two towns in the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership Region, which Conway is a part of, um, have funded the development of a forest climate resilience program. And what that program is gonna do, ultimately we wanna to expand to private ownerships, but initially what it's gonna do is help towns, hopefully including Conway, if you guys agree, um, get first, first step is to get these this climate plan. Um, for Conway, I think it's a fairly small lift because of what's already in your in your forest stewardship plans, but get this forest climate plan and then implement the work that is is called for in those plans. Um, it's not required that you do that, but it once you have this climate plan, it opens the door for then getting additional funding to do things like treat invasive species. Um, if there's places where um, it would be helpful to plant new trees, planting new trees that are climate appropriate for the, for the site, dealing with other stewardship issues in, in the forest. Um, and our, our next step after towns get these plans is to uh, apply for another MVP grant to actually implement those plans. So we're hoping to bring more funding to actually um, do the work that's called for in, in the plans. So that that's the kind of in a nutshell, what's what's in it for Conway? You would get an update to your current plans, and then be ready to receive more funding to implement those plans um, next year. And we've started conversations with the folks at the state who run MVP, and they're um, interested in. It sounds like they're interested in funding 
the next step of this of this program. Would we have to hire our forester to come back in and modify that, or could we yeah, do it ourselves? yeah, and that would be funded through the through this current grant. So it would be the be the same foresters, assuming you were happy with how things went the first time, yeah. um, and we would work with them to to do this update. They would need to do go through a new training for this climate plan template. Um, you know, Mary Wigmore and and Alex Barrett who worked on the first one, um, you know, I think they would both be interested in doing that anyway, from, from knowing them. Um, but yeah, they, we would work with your same, same foresters to, to do that update. How much more training can Mary Wigmore possibly get? I know she would probably, we would probably get more from her than we would, we would give to her if she was in the training, but we're going to pay for her to, to take part in it. So it's a, would we, would we have a, another hearing? I mean, we had a number of really excellent hearings that I considered training for the people of Conway. Uh, right. So that's, um, that is up for, for discussion. Um, so would you want a, additional? Yeah. So I guess in, in, in part, it's up to you in part. It's, uh, there are some towns getting brand new plans in, in this round and they will definitely have go through that, that whole process. We could do, uh, probably another hearing if if Conway was interested in that. Um, but if you already kind of know what you want in the plan and we're not changing it drastically, you probably wouldn't need to. Well, one of the things that you probably noticed about our existing plans is that there that there there is um, in multiple areas there is an identified sort of uh, uh, question or set of issues that did not come to a resolution within mm -hmm. that plan and instead uh -huh. left it up to the town to make subsequent decisions and yeah. that, that was because of the inability to get anything close to a consensus at our public hearings and uh -huh. so wh wherever you see those sort of well um th this this is the issue we're going to resolve this particular issue later by some mm -hmm. subsequent vote or some subsequent town process um then that that's because these things were discussed and um you know the you dig deep enough in any forest issue, and you will not get unanimity um, with with in, in any area. And just sure. it's just one of the beautiful things, I think. Yeah. It's, so well, this they, would be an they, opportunity they, 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 to, to take another crack at some of those. Uh, yeah, uh, or uh, opening it up. Okay. I don't know. I I have um, a couple questions, Chair. Hi, Janet. Hi. Um, I'm just curious, how much is this update gonna is costing or that this the state grant is paying for i'm just curious about that um it's probably on the order of we probably have about three thousand dollars for the for the update three or four thousand uh -huh. dollars for an uh -huh. update and and could you describe just a little bit about like how detailed like uh, is somebody finally measuring the carbon sequestration you know tree by tree or or what it's what's what's this doing um it would not it, it would for an update, it would not fund a full uh, inventory. That would be much, much more expensive. Um, but it, it would would develop would provide additional information. There's there's some good relationships between things that foresters already measure um, and carbon um, storage. So we could we could it would update it would take the existing data you have and calculate carbon from that. Oh, it would. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be a um, uh, like a, a forest offset level carbon inventory, but it would give you uh, a, uh, you know, a ballpark on on what you what kind of forest carbon you have. So and, and I guess the, what, go, go ahead. What, what Janet, you know, Janet just touched upon the carbon you know, and, and so, you know, I, I know, Josh, you're, you're a little bit familiar with the carbon credit uh, grant that, that, that Conley wrote and that we're proceeding with with Mary. And could, mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit about how this would dovetail with that? Yeah, so what, um, you know, carbon credit programs are focused on the carbon in the trees. Um, and the way carbon programs usually work or, or if you're selling carbon, like on the voluntary market, for example, or even a compliance market, um, for those projects to work, 
there's there's not a lot of different options and, and there's not a lot of thought on, I would say, protecting that carbon over the long term. I mean, there's there's sort of the legal mechanisms, but in terms of making sure that the forest is resilient, that's not really included um, it, other than making sure it stays there as forest. And that's, that's number one, a good step. But if you have issues with invasives or, um, or deer browse or, or any number of other things that could affect how the forest regenerates long-term, like if you have lots of invasive, they can kind of choke out the understory and you won't have as many tree seedlings coming up into the into the forest. Or and we all certainly deer. have lots of damage by deer. And, and if you have lots of deer and your, and your seedlings are getting eaten, um, you know, that has carbon implications in the long term, but in the in the time frame of carbon projects, those things aren't really taken into account because they just most of the carbon is in the big trees, and it just doesn't work for the um, for for selling carbon that's in the little trees. What this program does, the resiliency program, is is takes a uh, a look at those, it, or one of the things it can do is take a look at those those issues those long-term issues with regeneration and make sure that you have a future forest. And so it supports um, long-term carbon stocks, but it reason we're getting state funding for this rather than going to like try to sell carbon credits to fund this is that it um, you kind of need a funding source that's not tied to the markets to do it. Um, so it will support carbon in your forest over the long-term, but it's not gonna, directly interface with like a carbon offset project. All right. Um, so, I mean, so because this is just for the town, for your, the, what you're talking about is just for the town forests. Right, right. It, this this it, round, we're, we're building this program. Ultimately, we want to be able to, we're hoping that, that it attracts enough funding that we can also offer to private landowners. But at this point, we're focused on, on municipal properties. Can I just get a clarification because we've been talking about both forests, but it's actually just the one that was in the letter. So I just wanted if you could, you know, talk about that. Sure. Um, so we have a we have a grant. We have limited funds in that grant. We're we're trying to spread that as echo boots we can for different for it for different towns. So at this point, we don't know if we could fund updates of both of your plans. So you have the two properties. So um, we can commit to doing one of them. And there's some language in the letter that says, you know, like, you know, essentially we might be able to do the other one if, if funding allows. Um, and so I guess a couple of questions for you is like, which of those is, is, would be the, your top priority that we would put in the letter? I, I picked the larger one to put in the letter, but we can, we can adjust that if, if you want. And then um, if you're interested in having them both, um, we could we could we could strengthen that language to say you know specifically if funding allows we'll do the other one. Um, yeah, so th that's that's essentially why that's like that. Yeah, we don't want any one of our forests to be an orphan. <laughs> uh, I think the people of Conway were much more unanimous than this discussion has implied as to what they want, and we did allow some things in there that were not unanimous, but they were things that Mary wanted us to include in there for possible future choices. Mm -hmm. and, and it feels to me that this project is very much aligned with exactly what the people of Conway wanted. Josh, we discussed this, this is Marilyn, we discussed this mm -hmm. at the Forest and Trails Committee meeting and Brooke has heard this there were certain things that we would like to have included in the plan. Is that something we tell you? Brooke knows what they are. Is that something we tell you? Is that something we tell Mary? That would be something you would tell Mary because okay. um, she, she would be doing the, the update. I mean, certainly keep us in loop and we'll be in touch with Mary, but, but it would be, um, you know, adding new things to the plan would be, would be done by, by Mary. Okay. So, and, and then, you know, si signing the non-binding letter of intent is still just that non-binding thing, I Right, it, that, that, 
that would allow us, to, or, or the next step for us would be then to reach out to Mary and, and talk to her about what this would cost and then figure out like, you know, can we do both of the, both of the properties or can we do, do one of them? Um, so that, that's, that's essentially what the letter allows us to move forward with, with, with setting that up. All right. Josh, this is Deb Donaldson. Um, I have a quick question too. If the Fournier property is not included in this, will that limit us for getting grants in the future? Do you think? Um, potentially for like this this next round of for this for this next MVP round that we're going going to uh, pursue, uh, we're going to focus on the plant on the properties that have have a climate plan. That said, there would potentially also be uh, opportunity for um, when we go to that, that when we go to get that grant to write in money to update that other plan if we can't do it in the, at this point. The, if, if the amount that you're sort of allocating to Conway for this, because you're dividing it around, is about $3,000 yeah. and that's maybe, and maybe enough to do the big forest. I mean, how much? How much more could you know include in doing the other one also cost? And perhaps the town uh, could find that maybe extra thousand dollars someplace else. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I hesitate to put a, put a number on that before I've, I've talked to Mary and try to understand. Like, and, and she might be hesitant to say exactly how much it would cost before she goes through the training, which those are, that's going to happen in February. Um, so, um, but it would, it wouldn't certainly wouldn't be more than another $3,000, but it, it would it'd likely be a little less. Yeah, I mean, it just seems kind of a shame or whatever to leave one out now and then have to sort of scramble or add it on to later. And it just, if, depending on what the select board and others think. Like the CPA committee? Well, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Office supplies, who knows? Okay, all right. Um, so, you know, and you know, the, the other thing too, although, you know, Mass Audubon is doing its MVP thing. We're also gonna be doing our own thing. We always do our own thing anyway, so. Uh -huh. Um, and we're on our own sort of path with the carbon credit thing anyway. So, which we got an extension for till the end of June for the current grant. So, yeah. yeah. Um, well, one thing I should say about, we plan on doing MVP grant. We do need a town sponsor. <laughs> um, right. Because, you know, we can't do, well, actually the regulations have changed a bit, but we still need a town sponsor. Um, and so that, that would, another thing we could, we could talk about maybe not tonight, but is, is whether it would make sense for Conway to be, be a town sponsor for a project in the, the that would cover all the towns in the, in the Mohawk Trail region. I think, I mean, I'm bring, and I think we can, we're, we're hoping to be able to um, bring match to that. Would that preclude us from getting any other grants this year on our own though? It shouldn't, okay. I, I wouldn't think so. Okay. Some of these MVP grants are lots of different things lumped together. <laughs> yeah, we've applied for multiple ones in the past. And um, if we didn't get it, it wasn't for that reason. So uh, what, what else? What else? Um, I don't know. I, I saw that there was a Brooke Warrington, I guess is it, that was oh yes, I should have introduced. Brooke is um, uh, my colleague who, uh, at NEF, New England Forestry Foundation, who's also working on this project. This is a number of different NGOs, so Mass Audubon, New England Forestry Foundation, um, Nature Conservancy, um, U.S. Forest Service through their Northern Institute of Applied Climate Science Research Group, uh, as well as uh, the Regional Planning Commission agencies and, um, and others. All right, well. So this says it's non-binding. I mean, does that mean this isn't our final decision? We're going to talk about it again? Um, it, it's just, 
it can be as binding as you want. I think that was put into the, it, that was put into the letter to not scare off some towns that that were worried about being stuck in in something. But you do need this signed as soon as possible to be on schedule, correct? Right. So we do. So like I I mentioned before that we're starting the the forester trainings in February. So we need to talk to the forester soon. So we we. We, and we don't want to do that without the town's blessing. <laughs> I mean, to me, the only binding this would be if we talk to Mary and what she proposes is something that we don't like or something that we think the folks in Conway would not like. But, but other than that, I don't see any reason not for approving this. I move that we um, sign the non-binding letter of support. I'll second it. The non-binding... The non-binding letter that can be as binding as we want it to be. <laughs> letter yeah. of support. Right. What, right. what, what about a little change to include the other forest? Uh, if possible. Sure. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I would, from our perspective, I think we can add some language in there to say, you know, funding permitting, we will also provide it for the second forest. I don't think we, we can commit to definitely right. doing that, but certainly funding can permitted we would we would like to yeah we'd be happy to twist mary's arm to see if she would use the okay. same language for both forests yeah we've we've been twisting a lot of mary's arms lately <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> been great um all right so um motion we is have seconded. a motion and it's seconded all all in favor aye aye it's it's unanimous and we'll get we'll get in there and sign it hopefully tomorrow the next day everybody so Great. Okay, cool. and we'll send it off thanks josh thanks yeah, brooke thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you everybody take care see you uh so next um we're going to discuss how many rapid in-home COVID tests to purchase and vote to expend ARPA funds for that purpose. So, um, and then, right, uh, so, th so this is something that we talked about last time, um, and maybe the time before too, but we, we need to pick a number and, and, and order some. Just in the past weekend, basically everybody I know has asked when are we getting tests? We've heard that the town's getting tests. Get me tests. Can I have tests? So um, I was earlier, like even just a few days ago, saying, let's hold off on the numbers. Let's wait for a little while and order more if, they, if they're if they selling like hotcakes. But um, I'm over that now. And I'm just, um, I think we should get a lot. But that's, that's just my take on it. Just seriously, everybody I know this weekend has asked for some. So that's that's my take. I tried to get that out of the chair. Oh, he's still there. Yeah, but you shut him up. Bernie, do you have a sense of what kind of quantity they come in? Yeah, it's only kind of way. Five hundred uh, tests, or, or but it got quiet. Um, yeah, hang on a second. Let me. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hi, Lori. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> It depends on the manufacturer, unfortunately. So, I mean, I can reach out, but I kind of wanted to know what numbers we're talking about. Um, and I'll be honest with you, the, the prices seem to change daily, um, which does make it rather frustrating. So as soon as there's a decision made, I can, I can hop on tomorrow and place the order. I am chagrined to report that we were supposed to receive our first 180 tests today and they did not arrive. I have a couple emails into the vendor to find out why but it you know it, it wouldn't surprise me because there's such a run on them right now that they're a little delayed but i'm going to be pushy <laughs> well i know they're currently very hard to buy at cvs or big y or whatever and where and how are they going to be distributed well that's part of what needs to be decided but what i did do is i asked all the ems services and that's one of the reasons jackie's here today um, because, uh, oh, it's not working for me to answer her, sorry. <laughs> but but basically, Erica, I get more or less the answer to your question in a broad sense is sort of an all of the above approach to distributing them. And um, just rather than just one person or one board or whatever, just, you know, lots of 
you know, every, like e EMS and um, Board of Health and. Well, I mean, but like, but could anyone like show up at town hall and say, I want a rapid COVID test or could anyone, I mean, like. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like that. And I, the, 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 you know, we, they, they have to, they have to, they have to be known to be Conway residents. So that's my, my thing. I don't want to be buying buying right. tests. Right. I, like, I, I like our Asheville neighbors, but I don't want to buy them their tests. I'm just curious so, about the logistics. I mean, I totally trust the EMS, up, but, you know, department to distribute, you know, it, it's good, but. Something up there. Would oh, somebody yeah. show up and then we admit, and then they, they take the, do the test right there? I, I mean, what, came up your microphone. I, I don't, I don't know that we were planning on that. I will say that I need to double check the ARPA rules because I had just heard that we were not allowed to give them out to the general. We couldn't get reimbursed if we gave them out to the general public, but the rules just changed again. So I need to look into that. Um, yeah. Just I mean, somebody will show up in one ten of them. Yeah. And honestly, if you have to be a, a town, if you have to be affiliated with the town, maybe we'll get all those all the um, vacant board seats and the different boards filled up because people people will sign up to get to get their free COVID test. So that wouldn't be a bad thing. The personnel committee, we're we got nobody on it at all. So um, could, could I could I weigh in? Um, sure. Go ahead, Nelson. Okay. So um, I sent an email uh, to Bernie, and I think it was shared uh, with the select board about the way that the COVID tests were distributed that were donated by the state um, in Charlemont. I spoke with Doug Telling, um, the Board of Health there. So it does seem to me that if we're talking about a limited number of tests, that is not enough tests to give everyone in town uh, a test, uh, that we should distribute them first by order of need. And for example, you know, somebody who is uh, homebound, uh, somebody who can't afford to buy tests, even if they were available. That might be somebody, for example, who's, um, you know, taking advantage of fuel assistance. Um, so there's a whole, there, there's a there's a way to distribute the tests that would reach out to people who are in need of them most, as well as people who are perhaps uh, more at risk. For example, people who work for the town, um, you know, the uh, fire department, the ambulance service, uh, the police department, and so on. So I had put together a list of, of, of recommendation based on a list of those people and those organizations that I got from my conversation with Doug Kelly. Now in Charlemont, they distributed um, 270 kits or 540 tests. Each kit has two tests in it. Um, and the reason for that is that it's often recommended that you take a second test a couple of days after the first test to confirm either a positive or a negative result. So um, in, in Charlemont, they distributed 270 tests and they went to, I'm, I'm going by memory now, but Vernie may have that email. I'm just trying to pull it up uh, on my phone uh, to the fire department. Uh, the EMS or ambulance service, I guess, the police department, uh, town hall employees, um, the road crew, um, and people who were receiving Meals on Wheels, people were going to the food bank, um, and I think I added on my own uh, people who are getting fuel assistance, just knowing that that might be a financial challenge for those people. Um, and we could work with uh, community action to reach out to those people. So in that instance, they went through 540 tests, 270 kits, and their population is 800 people. So proportionally, it seemed to me we would need something that would be equivalent to half of our population, which would be 900 individual tests or 450. My recommendation was that we purchase 500 and we distribute them in that manner. Now, Doug had real concerns about how to distribute them to the general public, you know, to be sure that they're going to residents, that people are taking more than they needed and leaving a shorthanded to leaving the town shorthanded to get to other people. So that's another whole conversation. But if we're talking about doing an initial order, I think that a minimum of, of um, 500 test kits, which would be a thousand individual tests 
uh, which is roughly half the population um, of, of Conway. So, but that would be the minimum, the absolute minimum. Uh, we should be getting tests out there as soon as possible Nelson, based on everything that I, that I see. Nelson, I, I'm sorry. So that's, that's I, all I have. I, I, I've singled out that yours is the one that's sending us the music at the same time somehow. I'm pretty sure it's your... I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Donna, Donna, did you want to, did you want to say something about this, Donna? Yeah. I, I just want to caution you on the um, need basis and just remind you that if you're qualifying people on the need basis, that that's confidential information. So however you set up your system, whoever's receiving that information or getting any kind of confirmation that somebody qualifies as need that needs to be kept confidential their names can't be out there that kind of thing so i just wanted to make that really clear so i mean you know to me that 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 the exact mechanisms I, you know I, I think you know we we do have a little uh, uh, an arpa committee about that that's that's looking at that and i i would be okay i don't know about you and uh, about bob and erica i would be okay with just a deciding on how many we're ordering and um, give our town administrator the flexibility to develop the exact mechanisms for distribution based on consultation with uh, everybody. Well, Jack, so, think, especially um, if it's, if it's refundable. I mean, I, I right. Like it I, is. It's I, I, right. So I don't want to err on the side of too few tests. I would rather err on the side of more, you know, more testing than less. And I think Jackie had some ideas, some other um, places where we, we, we should focus on getting the test to. Well, um, I had mentioned there's probably six people that I'm aware of in Conway that would qualify as homebound. And also at that uh, stop and go lunch that they do on Thursdays in the town hall might be a good time to hand out some tests for uh, people that probably would qualify well, kind of similar to what yes. Doug's doing. And yeah, absolutely. The other thing that I'd like to say is that uh, these rapid tests should be taken with a whole lot of caution. Uh, they're not the be all and the end all. The PCR is the way to go. Personally, um, I question uh, getting them at all. But I think that this is what people want. And for uh, to some extent, you have to give them what they want. And they may be changing from going from a nose swab to a throat swab because they're finding that Omicron is uh, being found in the throat well before it's being found in the nose. And you're getting false negative tests when someone is in the throes of COVID by PCR. So I just don't think that they should be uh, the be all and the end all or portrayed that way. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Totally agree. But I hope that most people are aware of that. <laughs> all right. So, so are we okay with the a motion saying get, get 500 kits um, with each kit being a two test kit? Is that... Well, wouldn't it be, we already have um, 90, so total, five, 410? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, total. Mm -hmm. um, and, and give with, um, and, and allow the town administrator to work out the exact mechanisms for distribution. Is that all right, Bob? Any ideas? Uh, I, I just worry that's putting Veronique in a tough position, you, you know, that, 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 the, the, these are the kinds of things that get town administrators in trouble. And, you know, and, and okay. uh, if, if we specified what the mechanism was, it might relieve her of that responsibility. Uh, um, uh, well, I, to me, what, what, what more or less Nelson more or less fleshed out is sort of the uh, mechanism. Great but, to me. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I don't, you know, I would have added, I would have added the select board to that, to that list, but, um, you know, that's about it. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. Well, I mean, the, I, the other town boards too, school committee, you know, it, oh, there's the, um, I tell you the truth, Doug telling 
did have the select board and the board of health on his yeah. list. I remember correctly and yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, do we think that Veronique's going to be inundated at town hall with people just showing up and wanting to get their hands on a COVID test? If the transfer station is any example, I, I worry about people like to try to take advantage if they can. And I, if I could, I would suggest that that we start with the list and we set aside those we know that we need for EMS, for ambulance, for the Board of Health, for town employees, for homebound, for the scene, you know, um, and then whatever's left over you know, um, maybe I, at that point I could come back and say, because we're meeting every week now anyway, I could say, right, okay, yeah. how many, how, how do you want to distribute the ones that are left? Yeah. Could I, could I add something to that? Uh, right. So Doug, Doug did mention that in, uh, in Charlemagne, additional tests were given. So tests were given to members of the, of the police department and their family, enough for their the individual and their families, but the police department, the fire department, the ambulance service, and also so we're given extra tests. In this case, maybe it's the nurse, you know, the town nurse, the whatever, we're given extra tests to be distributed at their discretion um, because they're in people's homes um, and so on. One other thing that I'd like to add, just with regards, you know, the efficacy of the tests and so on, in, in Charlemont, the day after that or two days after, I'm not sure, one or two days after the tests were distributed, it included town hall employees, a person who works for the town, um, tested positive. The test was followed up with a PCR test. And, and there's an example right there of how the tests can benefit someone. Uh, people are, are, should be aware, not everyone is, but should be aware that these tests are not perfect, but it's the tool that we have at this point and we have the money. So, all right, there we go. So, so did, oh, Donna with another opinion on the subject. Wonderful, go ahead, Donna. Um, I think if people are really concerned and I've heard the same things that Jackie's reiterated about the um, effectiveness of these tests, you could always write a little disclaimer that went with the test, just saying if you, test negative, you know, I mean, I'm just sort of paraphrasing now, but if you test negative and still have COVID-like symptoms, you should go for a PCR test. If you continue to feel unwell, you should, you know, just something. I wouldn't want to bash the test. I think that would lead, might lead to some liability or something, but I certainly think just a little note saying that, you know, it doesn't hurt to get a PCR test, particularly if you test negative and you have symptoms or something of that nature might really be effective in conveying that concern about these tests. Thanks, I agree. So was there was there a coherent enough motion for Louise to make a minute to put in, to, to write down in an English language sentence or, or about this or? Well, Nelson had, he suggested the number that he thought we should get. So right. I, if Nelson wants to restate that number, I will make the motion that um, we uh, we ordered this number of. Uh, it, was, it was 410 tests because we have 90 coming in. That was the number that I recommend. I can't vote. <laughs> I know. So I make that motion <laughs> that we. So can I just ask for a little leeway just in case there um, um, is like a minimum order or something that messes it up that I can't do 410? And yes, yeah. if you have to do 500 or 600, I do. Yes, for, for that. 410 with leeway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Nelson. Thanks. All right. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. And... Um, so the, the other item on the agenda was- Roll call, you're remote. Uh, yes. I, I, it's unanimous. That's roll call. Oh. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think Donna, it was- Yeah, a verbal I, finding that it's unanimous? No? Okay. Can Bob, I, I, Bob, what was your vote? Aye. Aye. Erica, aye. what was your vote? Aye. Yes, and I was- That is officially roll call unanimous. Um, can I, I'm sorry, so, can I ask if that included- um, I wasn't sure how it ended up, how you wanted to proceed with giving me authority or, you know, because I know Bob brought up the concern. 
So how did you want to handle that? Boy, that, that leeway does not sit well with you already, is it? Boy, oh boy. It's well, the only way to order more tests. All right. All right. I order just do, do you um, give me the authority to then decide how the, they are handed out. And and, and if for, for the emergency management, everything but the general public. Oh, I thought we were going to decide on that because we're meeting next week anyway. I thought we can like we don't have to decide that right now. Right. Right. But if they come in tomorrow, I'm assuming I can give them out to EMS yeah. and to the Board of Health and to the people right. who we discussed. Anybody yeah. but the general public. Right. Yeah. And right. then yeah. that's what I wanted to clarify. OK. Yes. That's what I understood. <laughs> yeah. But that was that that whole motion was not exactly what Roberts had in mind when he wrote those rules of order. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's OK. He never got to Conway. Um, so the, uh, the other item on the agenda was hiring Roselli and Clark to provide a revenue replacement calculations. Subsequent events have rendered that unnecessary. So we win. Um, By tabling? <laughs> uh, yes, 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 yes. So, um, and then before executive session, there was just a brief note about a climate change forum in the mail. Um, um, who sent that along and whether we wanted to announce that we are co- co-facilitating uh, a climate change forum uh, that Deerfield's putting on at uh, the Frontier Regional School. What day was that, Bob? So before we get to that, there also was, I sent you a letter about the D, uh, ch a slight change to our DLTA grant to FERCOG. Yes. Is that it? Oh, oh, yeah. It was, it yes. was basically- Items that I anticipated. In the Conservation yeah. Commission, I want to say all of Western Mass, but at least in our region, we have lost our um, our circuit rider down in Springfield, who approves all of our all of our conservation commission stuff, and who is the person we look to for our expertise when we have questions. I don't understand why, but it had to do with him refusing to get vaccinated. I think, and and uh, you know, I'm sort of upset with a smart person getting not not keeping their job because of this. But anyway, um, and so, but, and I don't know if it's directly because of that, but that was brought up in the letter, but also I think there are towns that are having a hard time staffing their conservation commissions. And so there are a number of towns that are requesting that maybe we could have a shared conservation agent that would do that would be a conservation commission law expert and be shared among all of our towns and at least provide the expertise that we would have looked to Mark for when he had that job. And, and it would be like, uh, like food inspection. I mean, we would be hiring that job from somebody who works for FERCOG. And so, so the proposal is that we would ask FERCOG by, and we could have done this, but I don't know that we did, Veronique, you would know, did we circle shared conservation agent as one of our projects that we're asking FERCOG to think about when they consider what they should be, the projects that they should be looking to expand into for next year. It was on the list and I don't believe we ever talked about it. Um, and I'm not even sure that we necessarily would be purchasing that service, but there are a number of towns that are asking that we join with them in requesting FERCOG to analyze how much of a need there is and how much it would cost. And, and, FERCOG, it, it's, and FERCOG is willing to do that at no cost to us. And they would come back to us with their proposal of the service they might offer to towns in Franklin County. And we have until the 28th to, sub, to answer this survey, it looks like from your email. Uh, that I don't recall. Was well, there anything on it? Uh, yeah. I, 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 could, I printed the letter out here, but if you say so, yeah. I believe that could be the case. The, those, you know, letting FERCOG try to drum itself up some more business is, is okay. So, you know, if, whatever. I'm, it doesn't cost us anything. And we can, we can wait to tell them no. I can yeah, wait. I'm to, not sure. So I can wait so to we, tell them no. 
I can wait to tell him no if it makes Ashfield happier in the meantime. We're allowed to propose three projects. And so I don't know what yeah. project we would remove that we that we proposed yeah. that that we would add this one instead. Right. Right. I, I mean, what do we have to lose? Sure. Let's say investigate the possibility. Well, as of now, we do have an active conservation commission, but it's hanging on by a thread like many of our other committees. So let's investigate the possibility. Yeah, that's that's right. All right. Um, well, Veronique is looking that up. Let me talk about the other. Go ahead. Maybe she looked it up. But the other, the other is the letter, the Climate Change Forum. And the simple response I have for that is I got a letter from the pe people in Deerfield running this forum. And they are now proposing that they want the forum to be in person. And if it was February, whatever it was, February 12th or something, we, they will not do it on February 12th. We will not be through Omicron by February 12th. So they're proposing postponing it until around April 2nd. And so we, we, we don't have to, we don't have to uh, talk about this. Th this was just looking for the select board to in allow it to be included in Conway Currents and maybe on our town website. And if we wanted to support that, which I suspect we do, but we don't want to do it with the wrong date. So the, the date is now right. questionable and we can, we can re-support re this at some future time. All right. So I, I don't have that, um, but I will look it up, Bob. The, you mean the three things that we said we want to? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and I did just want to mention the, the H3821. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about that, testifying about the public safety building. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Tell us about that. I don't have that written in front of me. Okay. But that's... <clears throat> well, it's that um, Corinne Coriat and Corinne Coriat, sorry. And that's, uh, not, that's Natalie Blaze's legislative assistant. Right, right. Had sent us this email on her behalf saying that um, there is her bill H3821, an act creating a municipal and public safety building authority. Um, is going to be heard before a joint committee. And originally the date was, I think, going to be 11, the 11th, so tomorrow, but they postponed it until the 26th, 26th at 11. So the question is, did anybody from the town wish to give any testimony um, supporting that bill, um, which will you know, help bring monies to small towns like ours to help create public safety? And well, no. I mean, in theory, possibly, maybe, yeah. I mean, but yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm glad that Natalie's, you know, doing something about the on this issue, and it can't, I suppose, hurt because the status quo is so abysmal. But the the any type of thing like this, any type of state spending, ultimately has some relationship to population and wealth, which means that any and you know we'll be at the end of the line with this just like we are with everything else and um <clears throat> you know and, and and the 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 whole thing about spending you know about getting another board of another state agency um i you know i guess it's politically palatable because you can get those things passed because they don't have big dollar numbers attached to them but the thing is that we want a big dollar number attached to it so, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to be testifying. For I, I, I assume this but, letter is saying, are any of the three of us willing to volunteer and say, I will, I will present. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and I, I, I thought we could communicate to the chief of police that, you know, we, we would support his going up there and, you know, wearing, wearing, show, showing the Conway flag and sitting down and saying it'd be a good thing, but. I don't even know if he wants to do that. He's probably still licking his wounds from the highway facility thing that he helped to get over the finish line. So um, just like the rest of us are too. So, you know, um, yeah, yeah, whatever. So anybody that wants that, that, that wants to give testimony that's listening to this, contact Veronique, she'll give you the, <laughs> the link, the link. But other than that, 
Go, Natalie. Get us some money. And um, with that, we go into executive session. Um, so the purpose of this executive session. roll call. Oh. Yeah, right. Well, for, for, there's a few things first. Okay. The purpose of this executive session would, is, would be reason number six, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body and the chair does so declare. Um, and, the, um, at, and also at the conclusion of the executive session, we will also be um, ending the meeting, the open meeting portion of it immediately following without, without doing any business in between. So, um, and we do need to also inquire before we go into executive session, is everybody alone and having nobody, Bob, is anybody able to hear? I'm alone in the house. Erica, can anybody hear what you're saying? What no, we're and, saying? I can't, and I can't hear anything that anyone else is saying, thank God. Wow, wow. <laughs> and sitting with me, as usual, my only witness is my dog. Right. And, uh -oh. um, he tells no tales. It's a smart dog, though. Yeah, 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 he yeah, is. That's true. Um, so I vote to so, go into uh, executive session. Uh, that's a second. I'll roll. vote aye. Yeah. And Erica, aye. aye. Bob, I, I say aye. So yeah, we are I, now yeah. in executive session and we can, um, the property in question is 69 Main Street, if that was not mentioned. The, it um, was. Are there members of the public that are still on? Uh, is it, Priscilla and Janet, yeah, that's true. Janice and the ConCon, though, is that, I mean, because I know that. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so it's just Janet now. So Janet was is in was invited to this janet the same question applies to you though janet you have to you have to certify that you're alone and nobody can hear you i am alone nobody can hear okay and very who, good who's beckett that name showing up that, on my computer that's, 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 uh, you take uh, notes. Assistant to, uh, that's a town employee that's taking, taking notes, notes. <laughs> all right. he's my assistant all yeah. right and so yeah just for the minutes veronica to just say that the select board invited yeah those two people into the executive session and me for that matter yes 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 oh, I should, so i should have asked you whether anybody could hear you yeah nobody can hear me okay okay all right so um so, you, know, I, you ready for me to stop the recording yes stop the recording good night everybody Thanks.